It's no secret that the 2021 draft class is stacked. Everyone already knows all about the blue chippers who could be cornerstone, foundational pieces for teams going forward. Jalen Suggs leading Gonzaga as a freshman, Jonathan Kuminga and Jalen Green impressing in the G League already, Evan Mobley dominating at USC, and projected top pick Cade Cunningham are all bursting with the potential to change a team's trajectory. But the draft isn't just the top picks. Even as good as those guys are, it's almost certain that at least one of them will be a bust. It happens every year. Jalil Okafor was taken third in 2015, Josh Jackson was taken fourth in 2017, and Michael Kidd Gilchrist was taken second in 2012. That's just the inherent risk of drafting these young players. There's 60 guys that are going to be picked up on draft night, and there's always value to be found after the lottery. So today, I'm not talking about the can't-miss top-level prospects. They're getting enough coverage. Today, I want to talk about one of my personal favorite prospects in this year's class, who's been pretty overlooked. Today, I'm going to be talking about UNC freshman Dayron Sharp. Now, I'm not going to claim that Sharp should be considered a super high draft pick, especially in this particular class. But I do think that teams near the end of the lottery and the later half of the first round should really give him some consideration. He's certainly rough around the edges, and there are a lot of things he needs to work on. But there are several things he does at a pretty high level. First off, rebounds. Of course he's a great rebounder. He went to UNC. Rebounds themselves aren't quite as valuable as they used to be in the NBA, but offensive rebounds are still really important. They help generate additional possessions, and if there's one thing Dayron's really good at, it's offensive rebounds. He has amazing timing and hustle that sets him apart. He always gives max effort whenever he's on the court, and that activity has been a big part of why he led the ACC in offensive rebounds this season. He snagged 96 of them in conference play and had grabbed a ridiculous 18.6% of available offensive rebounds while he's on the court, which actually led the NCAA. Another thing he does well is getting good post position. You can see in these clips how he gets positioned to put himself in the perfect place for an offensive rebound and a putback. The modern NBA has gotten away from the low post for the most part, but it's still a useful skill to have and can be good for teams to mix up their offense from time to time. Sharp is about 6'10", 260, but he's also incredibly strong and quick for his size. One of his best offensive moves in the post is his lightning quick spin move. You can see how quickly he's able to get around a defender and get to the hole. Sharp isn't the most explosive center and isn't known for huge alley-oop dunks, but his combination of size and speed make him really hard to stop when he's decisive. I think my favorite thing about Dayron is his passing ability. He doesn't always get a ton of assists, but he sees the floor really well and has a knack for finding open shooters or fellow big men rolling to the basket. He's an absolute handful on the block, and a lot of teams will counter by trying to double him whenever he gets the ball there, but he's already shown a knack to pass out of the double team, like here where he gets doubled and is still able to find RJ Davis wide open cross court for an open three. Some of the passes he makes are just absolutely absurd, like this one where he actually leads the break and is able to find a one-headed bounce pass to a cutting point guard. Or this one where he's able to shuffle a one-headed pass to the corner for a shooter, and then when the defense recovers, he posts up, and when they double, he's able to refine the shooter for a wide open three. Doubling is something Virginia Tech did in the ACC tournament any time Dayron had the ball in the post, and he burned them almost every time. You can see here he gets doubled, but has the wherewithal to find Garrison Brooks wide open in the middle of the lane. On yet another play, they help off of RJ Davis to double in the post again, and instead of getting flustered and turning the ball over, Sharp calmly finds him for a wide open three. The shot didn't always fall because Caroline has been inconsistent with their shooting this season, but his ability to find open teammates under pressure is a good sign for his development at the next level. One thing Sharp is going to have to work on to succeed at the next level is his shooting form. He only made about 50% of his free throws last season, which is a big red flag, but there's some evidence of him being able to hit some mid-range shots. His form overall isn't too bad. There's a bit of a hitch and his helmet almost never stays tucked, but there's definitely something to work with here, which could help us gain transit to the next level really well. Even with these concerns, I think Sharp has a lot of potential upside to the next level. There just aren't that many players with his combination of size and quickness. He's shown flashes of being able to contain guards on the perimeter. He knows how to move his feet and contain dribble drives without fouling. His finishing does need to improve around the rim, but there's been clear progress on this already this season. Daron Sharp might not be a franchise-altering prospect, but that's okay, almost nobody is. There's a decent chance that he'll struggle for a while as he adjusts to the speed of the NBA, but I would bet by the end of his rookie year, he'll work himself into a productive backup big. A player with his skill and work ethic has a pretty high floor, and at worst, I think he could come in and be a great energy player off the bench. 
If he ever develops as a shooter, he could become a starter, or at the very least, stick around the NBA for a really long time. <laughs>